Nah, he's a warrior, man. He's battling. He's banged up. He's taking shots. They're a physical team. Uh, so, you know, that's, you're going to have to gut it out. Me, uh, well, you guys can see, he's free to talk amongst the best players in the state. Big stages. He does it every time. He makes incredible catches. Crow plays strips a guy on the kickoff. Yeah, God does it all. Come on, guys. Hit the East, West, keep the oppas hot on twist you with them choppers. West side, how we rock it, pull up all you get the pop it. Hey, them boy don't wanna smoke. Nah, we don't wanna smoke. Them boy don't wanna smoke. Nah. East, West, keep the oppas hot on twist you with them choppers. West side, how we rock it, pull up all you get the pop it. Hey, them boy don't wanna smoke. Man, them boy don't wanna nah. smoke. Them boy don't wanna smoke. Nah. Them boy don't wanna smoke. It's homecoming night tonight for Fairmont Senior as the Polar Bears play at home in front of the home fans at East West Stadium in Fairmont. The Elkins Tigers are in town to meet the Polar Bears. Elkins comes into the game tonight with a record of one win and six losses coming off a tough loss at home to North Marion a week ago. The Polar Bears lost a heartbreaker on this field 21 to 19 a week ago to Morgantown. Fairmont hopes to start a new streak in front of the home fans tonight. And now let's meet tonight's players. Brody Whitehair, number four, junior. Dylan Hours, number five, senior. Damani Johnson, eight, junior. Chris Wilson, 21, junior. Max Becerra, number 40, junior. Cannon Dinger, 10, junior. Anyone Jones, number 11, junior. Logan Canfield, number two, junior. Gavin Michael, number 14, senior. Riley Green, number 72, senior. Joseph Richmond, number 61, senior. Caleb Barber, guys, 50, junior. Trevor Bigelow, number 55, junior. Ms. Reed Lister, number 68, junior. Caleb Angelon, number 57, senior. Love Pool Calcini, 65, junior. Luke Abrazino, number 33, senior. Karen Boda, number 3, sophomore. Taylor Thorne, number 81, senior class. Jordan Wagner, number 1, junior. I got the call from a from Bardic, I thought, you know, here's a chance for us to pay the system back a little bit and kind of help you guys out on your homecoming since we kind of ruined Lincoln's a couple years ago. Uh, plus, that kind of helps us out, too. Uh, I'd much rather play Fairmont with them having two days to prepare for us than play them with five days to prepare, if you know what I mean. So tell me about uh, this Elkins team. What are the areas where you think this team has improved since the beginning of the year? Well, <laughs> kind of funny, but the things that we do best are we run the ball pretty well and we punt very well. I, that's probably because those are the things we've done the be the most. Uh, we have a pretty good punter, we have a, and we have a couple good backs that, that run hard. Uh, our line's okay. You know, they, they create some holes for us, and we try to misdirect a little bit, and that's probably our, our strong suit. You look at this Fairmont team, what do you see? Uh, just talent everywhere. Uh, we had uh, North Marion last week, and it was kind of the same situation. Uh, but I think Fairmont's got a few more stars behind their names. Uh, and, you know, like I said, there's not a weak spot, really. So we're just hoping to hang on and catch them off guard. That's Elkins coach Jimmy Hankins. His team matches up with the Polar Bears tonight. JL, this is a matchup that Fairmont obviously is a big favorite. And uh, these kinds of games sometimes, I think, are from a coaching standpoint, when you have a little difficulty getting your team really emotionally up for these games. Yeah, it's, it's been a rough week, you know. Anytime you have any disarray in your, your scheduling, your um, your day-to-day -day, uh, practice schedule or anything that interferes, especially with high school students, it, it, it throws them for a little a little loop. So um, I was in the locker room earlier tonight. I think they're, uh, they're set for tonight. But uh, it's been a – it's not a chaotic week for them, but, you know, just making sure that these high school kids are uh, focused in tonight. Tell me about your involvement now. Obviously, you're close to the program, having coached here for several years. How how involved do you stay with uh, with I, this program? I, you know, I'm I'm their biggest fan. Um, I, I I get my coaching fix during the week because I have most of the, uh, a lot of the players in class. I, I see Coach Bardic. I still you know text and talk to some of the assistant coaches from time to time. But uh, I'm happy where I'm at. Um, but, uh, yeah, I get my fix during the week. 
One of the polar bears who plays a key role both offensively and defensively is Trevor Bigelow. I had a chance to check in with him, get his reaction to that big game last week. It was physical. It was great. I loved it. It was a good team effort, and we're just that close. Tell me your thoughts on this team and where we are at this point of the season. Obviously, when you play at Fairmont, you're always thinking postseason. But where do you think this team is in terms of getting ready for that? I think we're definitely getting there. We're really high up right now, and uh, I think we're ready. As far as you are concerned, you've seen you've seen this from all angles because you started out as a freshman. You've played a lot of football. You're still a junior. What kind of uh, what what kind of a change has it been for you from these first three years? Uh, definitely been different playing both ways and punt and everything, and coming off the field. So I just got to run harder and just work a lot harder. That's Trevor Bigelow, who plays a big part on this polar bear team, both offensively and defensively. He's also the long snapper, so uh, these guys don't get a lot of uh, rest time, do they, Jay? No, 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 they don't. I was thinking about that, watching that Morgantown game, and, of course, Morgantown's big and physical. I'm thinking these guys are getting hit and hitting back-to-back -back and really getting very little time off. Yeah, it's like being in a car wreck every 30 seconds. Um, <laughs> Especially, you know, the way these guys weight train nowadays. I mean, they're stronger than grown men. Um, it's a lot of wear and tear on them. The Polar Bears are going to get the football first as we get ready to start the game tonight. Dylan Hours back deep for the Polar Bears. On one side, Chris Wilson, and on the other side is Gavin Michael. Doing the kicking for the Tigers is Nick Bowers. That's a name you'll hear a lot tonight. He does a little bit of everything for Elkins. There's a little squib kick and a high hop taken at the 32-yard line and brought this way by Logan Canfield. He brings it over the 40 up to about the 42-yard line, and that's where the Polar Bears will go first down and 10 as we get this game underway. Yeah, it was nice. Uh, Canfield fielded that cleanly and just got what he could out of it. Uh, we're going to end up in real good field position to start the game. Logan's got good hands. Obviously, he's the holder, so you don't pick a guy to be holder who can't come up with the football yeah. easily. And uh, I wouldn't want Arbogast to do that, no. <laughs> no. It's going to be first down and 10 for the Polar Bears now. Dylan Hours behind quarterback Brody White here. He's in the pistol formation. Canfield and H back for the Polar Bears. White out to the near side is Thornton. And it's first down and 10 for Fairmont at its own 42. And back to pass is White here. He's looking long for Thornton, who runs under the ball but can't quite get to it. It's incomplete. Trying to get Tavion his first uh, big play. Yeah. You know, pass protection was great there. Had a little pressure off the left ta uh, left tackle. But, you know, I wonder if maybe he lost it in the lights or something because uh, he didn't – I mean, he really didn't adjust to the ball. I mean, it was, yeah, it looked like it was pretty much on yeah. target. But uh, – he didn't come down with it, and Thornton goes to the sidelines, and Navon Jones now a wide out to the right on second down and 10. Handoff goes up the middle to Hours. He gets it to the 45, and then is wrestled and brought down behind the line of scrimmage, but he'll surge forward and get maybe about a yard. He, he had more yardage than that, but then he escaped and gave ground and then ends up with about a three-yard gain. Oh, it was a nice hole he ran through. Yeah. He just tried to get more yards than what he could, and he ran 10 to get one. Last week against North Marion, Elkins took the opening kickoff, took it down and scored, and led 7-0. Trying to stop the Polar Bears here, but now Elkins jumps off sides on that hard count, and it'll make it now, instead of third and seven, it will be third and two. There's that, fa that uh, famous Fairmont freeze. You know a little bit about that, don't you? We've been doing it for years. It'll be third down and two. The ball right at midfield now. Fairmont's moving from left to right. Blue uniforms, white helmets. Elkins in the all-white with black helmets. And third down and two for the Polar Bears. White hair, little screen pass coming to ours, and he gives ground, and he's brought down at the 45-yard line behind the line of scrimmage, and it's going to be fourth down and seven for the Polar Bears. Yeah, Ramirez made a nice play here. He got off a block of Canfield, and... Uh, and, and got Dylan low. If, if Camp could stay on that block another second. 
Now that's a five yard loss and fourth down and seven and the Polar Bears go for it here. The ball at their own 45. They need to get it to the Elkins 48. White here has an empty backfield. He has three receivers left and two to the right. Fourth down and seven. And Brody back to pass. Sends it to the far sidelines and the pass is intercepted near midfield. The Tigers have the football taken down to about the 49 yard line. Elkins has the football. A pass interception, interception brought by down Elkins. by Ty McGee. Yeah, he was trying to get the ball to Dinger out here on the left oh, sideline. Just didn't get it, just didn't get enough air under it. So Brody White here doesn't do that very much, but he has thrown his seventh interception of the season, and the Tigers have the football first down and 10 with 10-12 to go here in the opening quarter. Yeah, that's a big win for Elkins there, Jeff. Certainly holding the Polar Bears. No first downs on their first possession. Okay, here comes that too tight T formation. Their quarterback is a freshman, Sourwine, three running backs behind him. And the handoff comes this way, and it comes to Fortney. And Fortney carries the football down inside the 50 to the 46-yard line. He'll get about three yards on the play. Yeah, they run a little power play here. Back to the open side. And Their regular quarterback injured. That's Van Devender. He's out for another few days before he returns from a broken foot. Second down and seven. At the Fairmont 46, handoff to Nick Bowers, and Bowers is stopped at the line of scrimmage. Dylan Hours was one of the first ones to meet him. Yeah, Elkins got into a pro set there, pro, uh, pro set eye, and just ran, uh, it looked like just ran ISO, um, ISO to the right. And Hours Dylan, got Bowers. Uh, Dylan did a nice job of stepping up and taking on the, uh, the, the lineman and making the play. Third down and seven for the Tigers now at the Polar Bear 46-yard line. Wide out to the left side. Quarterback Sauerwein gives it to Bauer, sweeping to the right side. He puts his shoulder down and gets the extra yardage, and he might have an Elkins first down inside the 40 to the 39-yard line. That's a good tough run by the young man. They'll check the sticks on the far side, and they signal first down for the Tigers. Tell you what, our defense better wake up. Elkins come to play tonight. It's a seven-yard gain for Bowers. First and ten Tigers. The ball at the Fairmont 39-yard line. And there is a handoff off to the right side taken by Jaden Harding. And he's grabbed from behind by Hours and brought down after number a short one, game. Harding, the ball carrier, brought down by number five, Dylan Hours. Yeah, Dylan just fought over the block and got him from behind. Um, you know, Elkins is running toward their strength. I mean, just, just look at their formation, set, set by their formation, tell you where they're going to run it. Second down and 10, there's no gain on that play. Game clock at 8-12. No score in this game. The Tigers have the football at the Fairmont 39. Second down and 10. In motion comes Bowers, and he yep. gets the handoff, and he also gets... The headlock from uh, Dylan Hours, who throws him down. That was Fortney, who actually carried it, and he's going to lose yardage back to the 45, so that'll be a six-yard loss. Yeah, they brought Dylan on a stunt, and he just ran through an open window and A-gap. But again, if you look, Elkins is, uh, they're running to their strength. They're, they're, they're not trying to buffalo us or anything. I mean, they're strong right, they're running right, they're strong left, they're running left so far. So now the center comes out over the ball for the Tigers. That's Nick Bonner. Let's see if they go right here. Wide out to the left uh -oh, in motion. Jet. Oh, yeah, here it comes. There's the counter. counter play going to the right side, and it's taken by Bowers. He runs to the sidelines close to the original line of scrimmage at the 39 and pushed out of bounds. Number 11, yeah. Bowers, the we used to call that, when we ran a wing team, we used to call that uh, red formation with tight ends right. Down. And it's just a kill count of Trey. So now it's fourth down and nine. Oh, I'm sorry, crisscross counter. Don't want to make that mistake. <laughs> well, I know if, if Paul Kettering's listening, he's, he's already got me. <laughs> okay. Owen Stanley in to do the putting. He's a big guy, a lineman. Punts it downfield. 
Spiraling punt that hits at the 15, mm -hmm. at the 10, at the 5, and is going to be down right at about the 5 yard line. So, nice punt, 33 yards, but he didn't want it to be much longer than that because it's at the Polar Bear 5 at the change of possession with 7.01 to go here in the first quarter. Yeah, they sure flipped the field on us, you know. First of possession, we started on with the 42. 42? Yeah, now we're at the 5. So, Fairmont Senior now with 95 yards to go to score. No score in this game. It'll be first down and 10. Fairmont had the ball on its first possession and did not get a first down and even had the advantage of a five-yard Elkins penalty. All right, looks like Elkins is running a 4-4 cover three. White here. Hands it off to Dylan Hours off the left side, and Hours takes it out over the 10 up to the 15 and is going to be close to a first down for the Polar Bears, and he'll have it as he takes the ball over the 15 to about the 17-yard line, and it's going to be first and 10 for the Polar Bears, first first down of the night. Yeah, look at that. We're, we got our double teams working to the second level. And Dylan made a nice run. First down and 10 at the Fairmont. 17. White here. Back to pass. Has time. Sending it down the sidelines, and the pass is overthrown, intended for Navon Jones at about the 45 in Elkins territory, but he couldn't catch up to the ball, and it'll be second and 10. Yeah, pass protection was there. It looked great, and, uh, you know, we just didn't make the connection down the field. That's, you know, that's two deep balls. We've had guys open. Last week, the Tigers played North Marion, and North used its backup quarterback the entire game, and he was 8 for 10 passing against this Elkins team. Second and 10 Polar Bears now at their 17. Whitehair gives it to Hours again off the left side. Hours going to be brought down after a gain up to about the 21-yard line. He'll get maybe four yards on the play. See if they mark him at the 22. They do, so it'll be five-yard gain and a third and five for Fairmont. Yeah, nice blocking up front. You know, four yards of carry, that's not too bad. Third down and five now for Fairmont. White here in the pistol. Trying to draw the Tigers off sides. They're not going to buy it on a second straight possession. And now White here is back to pass. Chased out of the pocket. He runs to the far side of the field. Looking at the first down marker, does he get it as he takes it out of bounds? And it looks like he does at about the 28-yard line. Just gets enough for a Polar Bear first down. So the Polar Bears get their second first down, both coming on this drive, which began at the Fairmont 5. It's now up at the 28-yard line. First and 10. Three receivers to the right side, one to the left. White here gives it to Hours right up the middle, and Dylan has some running room. He gets out over the 35, up to the 40, to the sidelines at the 50. Cuts inside, runs through a tackle, goes along the sidelines, and steps out of bounds at about the 42 or 43-yard line. Fine run. Yeah, the left guard in the center took a double to the second level and opened that up for five for Dylan. It's a 29-yard run for Dylan Hours, who is Fairmont's leading rusher. Only averages about 47 yards a game, though. That's not Fairmont's strength. They just like to complement the passing game with the running game. It's first down and 10. Now an empty backfield. Wide here back to pass, getting pressure. There's the screen pass. Caught by Canfield at the 40. He's down to the 35. He's at the 30. Edge is out to the center of the field at the 15, yep. the 10, the 5. He's into the end zone. It's a Polar Bear touchdown. A 43-yard screen pass TD from Brody Whitehair to Logan Canfield. And the Polar Bears score first and lead it 6 to nothing. Yeah, everybody up front got their block downfield. And I'm sure if you're watching at home, you can see uh, – uh, well, you know, two linemen almost going to the end zone with him. So Logan Canfield scoring the touchdown for the Polar Bears. And attempting the extra point now is Cam Peschel, who is 34 for 38 this season. Canfield will be the holder. 
Here's Special's kick. It is up. It is good. Timeout on the field. 4.50 to go. First quarter. Polar Bears 7. Elkins nothing on fun. 93-1. Hi, my name is Zach Frazier and I'm from Fairmont, West Virginia. And when I'm back at home in Fairmont, you'll find me at my local Parmar store. We had that golden boot pride at Parmar. There are literally hundreds of Parmar stores in West Virginia, Kentucky, Ohio, and Pennsylvania, and even more on the way. Download the Parmar app to save even more. And whether it's food, gas, groceries, or whatever, we have you covered at Parmar. West Virginia proud and ready to serve you. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. We all just had a chance to witness Logan Canfield scoring his first ever touchdown. It was a 43-yard screen pass. And I'll tell you, that wasn't just an easy catch and run to the end zone. He had to break a couple of tackles along the way. And the Polar Bears lead 7-0. Special ready to kick off now. Puts the ball in the center of the field at the 40. Christian Lopez is the deep returner. He stands at about the five yard line. The ball drops off the tee and Fesho will have to come up and replace it. Fortney and Bowers are also back for Elkins. 4.50 to go. Polar Bears now with a seven nothing lead. Homecoming night at East West Stadium and there is Peschel's kick. It's going to be caught by Bowers at the 12. He gets out over the 15, up to the 20, and Ooh. he's hit hard inside the 30-yard line. Gavin Michael with the tackle for the Polar Bears. That was a great open field tackle. 14. Watch him break down. Yeah. You know, hey, he's a wrestler. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I really didn't see the number. Yeah. But when I saw the way the tackle was made, yeah. I knew that had to be Gavin. Hey, he's a wrestler, all right. Let's see, shot a double leg on him. Wrestlers make the best tacklers, Jeff. And not just that. Yeah. <clears throat> we have a time on the field. The referee coming to the center of the field. Penalty coming up against the Tigers. Flagler Illegal Flagler. block. Block and blow the way against Elkin. So that's he going to be a penalty that takes the ball back to about the 14-yard line. That's a half the distance to the goal line penalty. And it's going to be first down and 10 for the Tigers, but they are deep in their own territory now. At the 4.43 mark of the first quarter, the Polar Bears have just scored to take a 7-0 lead. Their quarterback, just a freshman. And it's hard to see him behind the lineman as he gets up under center now. One running back behind him, wing back left and right. And there is the handoff right up the middle. And the ball is taken by Riley Ryder, and Ryder will get it up to about the 20-yard line, or the 15, rather. Yeah, that was just a, a, the old, that was an old wing tee play there. That's, that's Belly. Uh, Belly's run to the weak side. You lead blocking up with the wing. And it brings up a second down and nine as the ball is set down at the 15. Elkins trailing seven to nothing. Their center, Bonner, over the ball. And now Sauerwein is in the pistol formation. He has his running back behind him. And that's Bowers. Handoff goes to Bowers. He runs up the middle, and he's hit by Boda. And he is going to be stopped. Boda and then Tavion Thornton came in to help out. It'll be a gain of a couple and bring up a third down and long. Yeah, that's where he shut it off. They ran counter tray back, back to the sideline. Brings up a third down. Boda did a nice job stepping up in the hole there. Third down and seven. The football just shy of the 18-yard line. Tigers come out of the huddle now. 
knowing they really would like to get a first down or else the Polar Bears are going to have a really good field position. Third down, seven yards to go. Hand off to Bowers again. Bowers coming to the left side, puts his head down, runs hard from the 20 up close to the 25-yard line, and then gang tackled there. And he's going to be close to the first down. Yeah. And he's got it. It's a first down for Nick Bowers. That's a nice run. Nice run. You know, they went to the uh, short side of the field. They put trips to the short side of the field and made it a clump formation at the end of the line and uh, pulled the backside guard. That's that technical football terminology, the yeah. clump formation. I like that. That's uh, Mark Delegate named at the clump. Well, if he named it, then yeah. we have to definitely respect it. First down, 10 for the Tigers at their own 25-yard line, trailing Fairmont 7-0. And this time the ball is given to Ryder, and Ryder is hit by the left side of the polar bear line. Number Gavin Michael drove him into the backfield, but he'll get maybe a yard on the play, and it'll be a second and nine. Yeah, they're in a T formation again. They just ran ISO, <laughs> ISO to the right. You know, I don't think they figured out how to block our number five, Dylan Hours, yet. Second down, nine yards to go. Tigers, as I mentioned before, they had a 14-play drive against North Marion to score the first touchdown to lead that game 7-0 but then it all fell apart. They lost 49-14. Second down play, under center, the quarterback, and there is a deep handoff, and there's Bracero. He's got the tackle along with Arbogast, a loss on the play for Riley Ryder. Yeah, they're trying to run, you could say it's a, like some type of trap, and it, uh, it got blown up. Uh, our nose guard did a nice job there. Four yard loss on the play for Ryder. And now third down and long for the Tigers. They come to the line of scrimmage with 10 seconds on the play clock. Spread out the formation a little bit now with wide out to the near side. Quarterback up under center, wing back in motion. There's the counterplay to Bowers yeah. wide to the left side. Dances away from one tackle at the 20. Takes it up to about the 25-yard line. Dakota Nisley has him there, and it's Bowers going to bring up a fourth down for the Tigers. Brought down by number 25, Dakota Nisley. Fourth down. So fourth down and 10, yeah. and Stanley comes in to punt for Elkins. Yeah, just a double handoff. Coach wasn't lying. They, they like to run the ball. He said running and punting are the two things they yeah. do best, and that's what we're seeing. Running and now punting. Stanley, line of scrimmage to 25, and that's a low line drive punt. Takes a roll, and hours has it roll behind him. Now he's just going to let the Tigers down it at about the 33-yard line, and that's where the Polar Bears will go. Change possession at 46 seconds to go here in the opening quarter from East West Stadium. It is homecoming night. It is perfect weather-wise for homecoming tonight. From the Metro Sports scoreboard in the first quarter, East 6, Liberty of Clarksburg, nothing. Arsenburg, Barbara, 0-0, zero, zero, and Independence leads. The Polar Bears come to the line of scrimmage now. It's first down and 10 at the Fairmont 33, and the Polar Bears have a 7-0 lead. Their touchdown, a pass from White Hair to Canfield. Brody sends Gavin Michael in motion. There's the shovel pass to him. He gets it at the 35. He's up to the 40-yard line, down the sidelines, and then just runs out of real estate, goes out of bounds, out over the 45 at about the 47. It'll be a 14-yard gain. Yeah, we're just running that little Austin pass to the left. And blocking's there. Oh, Dinger had a nice block here on the edge. First down, 10 Polar Bears at the Elkins 47-yard line, and there is the handoff to Dylan Hours. Hours breaks it to the outside. He's at the 40, down the sidelines at the 35, and then just runs out of bounds at about the 28-yard line. Five hours, the ball carrier. Run out of bounds by number 30, Ryder. 
That'll be a 25-yard gain for Dylan Hours. He's already over 70 yards rushing here in the first quarter, and the Polar Bears are looking at a first down and 10 at the Tiger 28-yard line. Three receivers to the right side now, and Whitehair is back to pass. Looking now, chased out of the pocket, fires on the run down to the corner, caught along the sidelines by Dinger, and he's tight roping the sidelines, catches it, and goes out of bounds at about the two. All he does is catch. Tell you, the pass protection's good. You take a look at Dinger, he loves those passes that are oh, yeah. difficult to catch, and that one wasn't as hard to catch if he'd been in the uh, open field, but he was worried about maneuvering around was, the sidelines. He tried to reach for it. 25-yard pass play, first and goal from the three-yard line. Now Hours comes up under center at the quarterback spot, takes the, hand, the snap and runs oh. wide to the left and takes it to the one. Yeah, we got, got a flag here. You know, Dylan saw something to break it to the left. You know, with them running that 4-4, you know, they got the overhang backers on the end. Uh, there's, so, you know, there's an overhang on each end of the line. Um, they're a hard person to account for uh, in the run game. So what do you Holy give up? Uh, you just... It's a holding that, penalty yeah. on, a, uh, on that play, which is kind of unusual, that close. Well, we had to, you know... Well, I see, see the holding. We had the push up front. I, you know, I don't know what Dylan saw there to break it to the left. So that's a 10-yard penalty. The ball is at the 12-yard line, and now we have a time at the line of scrimmage. Just got to be patient. Just, you know, it's one of those, just be patient. It's coming. The hole's going to be there. 12 seconds to go in the first quarter. Fairmont on top 7 to nothing. And now the referee says start the clock. And the Polar Bears come to the line of scrimmage. Ready to get this play off before the first quarter comes to an end. White here back to pass. He's in trouble. Chased out of the pocket. And he's going to be brought down inside the 10-yard line at about the 8. And that will be the end of the first quarter. After one quarter from East West Stadium in Fairmont, it's the Polar Bears 7. The Elkins Tigers nothing on Fun 93-1. Hi, this is Meredith Mayer from Fairmont, West Virginia, and when I'm back home, you can find me at my local Parmar store. We had that thundering herd pride at your local Parmar stores. We are over 200 stores strong and growing. Download the Parmar app for even more savings and sign up for the Parmar rewards card. Whether it's food, gas, or groceries, we have you covered. We are Marshall and we are Parmar stores. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. Here at the Cracker Barrel, homestyle food and great value go hand in hand with favorites like slow simmered chicken and dumplings starting at $7.99 or perfectly golden fluffy buttermilk pancakes with your own bottle of warm syrup. Come fill up on favorites without emptying your wallet. Cracker Barrel, take care now. At about the eight yard line. Hours the running back behind the quarterback, White here. Bracero in as a blocking back. Wide to the left, Dinger and Canfield. Gavin Michael is wide to the right side. Second down and goal. High snap. Hours takes it. Hours looking for an opening. Goes right, then left, and then he's tripped up by the ankles and brought down at about the five-yard line, Caden Ramirez makes the tackle for Elkins. Three-yard gain for hours, but now it's third down and goal from the five-yard line. Jones, Dinger, wide outs to the left. Canfield, Michael, wide to the right. In the pistol is White here. He's back to pass. Slant for Michael, and he can't get to the ball. It's broken up in the end zone, incomplete. 
and it'll be fourth down and goal for the Polar Bears. Yeah, he, little, he led him a little bit too far on that one, Jeff. Pass protection was good there. You know, I played before with Dylan. I think Dylan, he needs to just be a little bit more patient, just a little bit more patient. Now it's going to be fourth and goal from the five, and the Polar Bears will go for it. If they were to kick a field goal from here, it would be pretty much like an extra point with an angle. And the Polar Bears now send ours as a wide out to the right side, Canfield to the right of quarterback Whitehair, who's back to pass, looks into the end zone, lofts it down into the corner oh, of the end zone, oh. and the pass is incomplete, broken up, intended for Dinger. Nice defensive play made by the Tigers, Fortney though, and it's going to be Elkins ball, first down and 10, with the football marked at the five yard line. Yeah, it was, it was a good play by number 34 for Elkins. Uh, a little late on the ball to the corner to Dinger. Uh, pass protection was good. So with 11.06 to go in the second quarter, Elkins has the football, trailing the Polar Bears 7 to nothing. Bigelow, Bracero, and Arbogast along the front line for Fairmont. Wilson in at one of the linebacker spots for the Polar Bears now. First down and 10 for the Tigers. Handoff goes to Bowers. And Bowers stretches forward to about the eight yard line. You know, in this formation, a too tight T formation, all it really does, it makes you balance out on the defense um, you know, with the two tights. Um, they still are running mainly to the right hand side out of it. Uh, we'll see if they need to start changing that up here. It'll be second down and eight yards to go. The football marked at about the eight in Elkins territory as they move from left to right. 10.35 to go. Second quarter, Polar Bears lead 7-0. Pistol formation for Sauerwein. Deep handoff, and Bowers eludes one tackler, but then is hit at the line of scrimmage and brought down by Bracero. Yeah, they had clump left. But they still had two tights, and uh, they ran the ball back to the right again. One yard gain on that play, and now it's going to be third and seven. They've called on Nick Bowers on two third and longs, and he's picked up the first down for them twice so far in this game tonight. So all eyes should be on number 11 for the Tigers. They have not attempted a pass tonight, and this is not a spot where you would expect that. And there is the handoff to Bowers, running wide to the near side, but he is hit as he takes it over the 10, and Wilson gets him first, short of the first down marker, number and the Tigers Powers will be forced to punt it away. Brought down by number eight, Damani Johnson. Yeah, they pulled the play side guard. <laughs> yeah, nice defensive play by uh, number eight, uh, Damani Johnson. Four yard gain and a punting situation now. And the punter stands in his end zone just outside the end zone rather, and there's a nice floating punt. Ours has to go back, and it rolls behind him back inside the 30. He picks it up at the 28-yard line, goes right, then tries to come back the other way, now breaks free. He gets up uh, to the 40. He gets to the 45. Uh, there's damn. a flag thrown on a block, illegal block, and he'll take it down the sidelines and go out of bounds. Yeah, you got to get your helmet in front. Number 72, Owen Stanley. You saw that one when yeah. it happened. Yeah, he, I mean, <laughs> if he just had his helmet in front, it would have been a good block. And it really wasn't close mm -hmm. as uh, Taryn Boda hit him in the back. Yeah, I, uh, you know, and I, you know, the thing is, I don't know if that, if that Elkins player would even made the play. So overlooked in all of that is the fact that that was quite a punt for, yeah. for their uh, punter. You know, Dylan made a nice play on it because as a punter, you can't let the ball over your head and let it roll like it was. So the Polar Bears hit with uh, call holding. So holding called against the Polar Bears takes the ball back to the 25-yard line. And it's going to be first down and 10 for Fairmont the from time, there. That was a 54-yard punt, by the way, for 
the Tigers, Owen Stanley. And Stanley is just a freshman. First down 10, and he's also 6'2", 245. Not your typical punter bill. While back at the Fairmont, 26, 8.52 on the clock at the change of possession. We've had more delays at the line of scrimmage tonight in this first half than you typically have in an entire game. Now, we're ready to go. First down and 10. Fairmont with the ball at its own 26. And wide air, a little screen pass far side. And it is caught at the line of scrimmage and taken for a couple of yards by Damani Johnson. Pass complete to number eight, Damani Johnson. Two-yard gain. Yeah. It'll be second and eight. Line's getting upfield. If uh, Gavin Michael could have held his block just for another second. White air now, five of eight passing, 69 yards. Second down and eight for the Polar Bears. And off goes to Damani Johnson, wide to the right. He gets out over the 30, the 35, the 40, the 45, the 50, down the sidelines at the 40, hit from behind and brought down by Nick Bowers, but a nice big gain for Damani Johnson. And they are going to mark him out of bounds inside the 25 yard line at about the 22. Yeah, he you know he just broke this. This was supposed to hit up inside. Yeah, he busted it out to the side, outside of the toward the sidelines, and turned on the Jets. It's a 50-yard run for Damani Johnson and a polar bear first down, and that certainly flips the field. The ball at the 23-yard line, and White here is back to pass, chased out of the pocket, running to the far side. Now just runs with it down the sidelines, cuts in at about the 20 and takes it down to about the 16. We get about seven on the play. Yeah, this was the first time uh, the pocket actually broke down and Brody took it off to the right. And he's athletic enough to make uh, to make a play. I mean, you know, Fairmont's always been graceful enough and have uh, quarterbacks that's got a little wheels. It'll be second down and four. They set the ball at the 16. Johnson, the running back behind Whitehair, who's in the pistol on this second and play, second and four play. Johnson gets the handoff up the middle, breaks it to the outside as he takes it inside the 15, close to the first down marker on the far side of the field at about the 12. And yep. it is a Fairmont first down. We just ran counter left, pulled the backside guard and tackle. First down, Fairmont. So the Polar Bears were uh, here just on the last possession, but were held on a Jeff, Fourth he, down play. He shouldn't have broke it back. The hole was there. Could have gone a little yeah, farther. Yeah, he could have scored on that. Now it's first down and 10 from the 12. Chris Wilson in the game. And he gets a handoff inside the 10. He's down to the 5. Tripped up and then dives close to the end zone. But he's going to be just short at about the 1, maybe the 2. We'll see where they finally mark him down. Yeah, we just ran. It's, it's one back power. Um, we pull a, we'll pull a backside guard. It was a nice play. Got some good yards out of it. A nine-yard gain for Wilson, so it's second down and one from the two. He ran it again. And there's the give to Wilson off the right side, and he'll take it down to the one-yard line. Won't get into the end zone, but most likely will have a Fairmont first down. Let's see replay here where the runner came, defender run through. It is a first down, and it's first and goal from the one-yard yeah. line. Yeah, the backside backer just ran through the, win the vacant window that was left from the pulling guard. Wilson, the tailback, behind Whitehair. And here is Brody, quarterback keeper off the right side, and he'll take it in untouched into the end zone. Hits up, pull a bear touchdown. Brody White here runs it in from one yard out, and the Polar Bears lead it 13 to nothing. Yeah. Just quarterback keep right. Didn't pull anybody, just put a hat on a hat. So Brody's a little more comfortable throwing them into the end zone, but he ran that one in. That is his fifth rushing touchdown of the season. Extra point attempt for Peschel, 35 of 39 this season. 
Canfield to hold. The ball is down. The kick is up, and the kick is good. And there's timeout on the field. 6.28 to go, second quarter from Fairmont. It's the Polar Bears 14. Elkins nothing on Fun 93-1. Here at the Cracker Barrel, home-style food and great value go hand-in-hand with favorites like slow-simmered chicken and dumplings starting at $7.99 or perfectly golden fluffy buttermilk pancakes with your own bottle of warm syrup. Come fill up on favorites without emptying your wallet. Cracker Barrel. Take care now. Crosstown rival East Fairmont playing Liberty tonight. Second quarter, B's lead. The Mountaineers 13 to nothing. Special ready to kick off for the Polar Bears from right to left, from the 40 at the center of the field. Lopez is the deep returner. And there's a good end over end kick that goes to the deep returner. Gets it at the 15. Comes up the center of the field out over the 20, the 25, the 30, and over the 35. And there's Gavin Michael picking him up and throwing him down at the 41. Yeah, we had a couple missed tackles there to lead it off there. <clears throat> Get the height and weight on Christian Lopez. 5'5", 113 pounds. First and 10 Tigers at the Elkins 41, trailing the Polar Bears 14 to nothing. Elkins has been a little more competitive than I think most people thought. Yeah. And the Tigers have the football now near midfield. Well, they came to play tonight. Freshman quarterback Sauerwein and gives it up the middle. Bowers with a nice hole takes it up close to midfield. He'll get eight. It'll be second down and two. They set it down at the Tiger 49. Yeah, just trying to kick out uh, inside ISO, and, and we had two missed tackles on the, at the line of scrimmage. Coaches notice those missed, mixed, missed tackles, yeah. don't they? You see guys laying on their chest. It's not good. Second and two from the Tiger 49. Sour wine, yeah. going to give it to Lopez again. Yeah, it was, it was the same play, number 77. With the right guard all started. False start penalty against the Tigers. Second flag against Elkins tonight. And that makes it a second down and about seven as the ball is taken back to the 44. The Elkins coach, Jimmy Hankins, was an assistant at Lewis County for several seasons and three years ago took the Elkins head coaching job, replacing Evan Hott, who had replaced his dad, Greg Hott. There is the handoff to Fortney, wide to the left side. Fortney gets to the line of scrimmage and one more, and that'll be all. Hit and brought down there. Nice defensive play by Rudy Carrillo, the Polar Bears, a freshman, 5'7", 150. Yeah, this is the old jet sweep. Get him in motion, hand him off, and pull play side guard. Third down, seven yards to go for the Tigers. Now with the ball on the far hash marks closer to the Polar Bear sidelines. Center, Nick Bonner comes out over the football. Third and long, so you know what that means. Nick Bowers is going to handle the ball. There is the handoff to Bowers, coming Clever, wide to the Clever. near side. Gets the first down, inside the 50, the 45, and to the 40, and then uh, tackled out of bounds inside the 40-yard line by Dinger, and now a flag is thrown after the play. I don't think I'm going to call it in Elkins or us. That was a nice play. He's got some speed to him, Jeff. Dinger tackled him a little out out of bounds, but I don't think the flag was thrown then. It was after a reaction. Yeah. And I'm not sure who reacted to whom at that point, but it appears to be a uh, major penalty coming against 
one team or the other. It was on the Elkins sidelines. Well, they got their own little huddle going. Saw that a lot last night. <laughs> That's all we're going to talk about last yeah. night. But, you know, Jeff Elkins, Elkins showed up. They come to play. I mean, I know we're up 14-0. Um, but Elkins is moving the ball. They are. Um, and, and it's one-dimensional. They, yeah. are, they are not, they haven't attempted a pass. Yeah, they're, they're moving the ball. I mean, we've, we've played them some years where they didn't get past the 50. Mm -hmm. Well, it is going to be a 15-yard penalty against the Tigers. So the run will count. Then you will assess the 15-yard penalty, the reaction to the Dinger play out of bounds. The Tigers reacted, and that really personal hit them because foul. they thought they had had a personal foul against the other team, and now they end up getting the personal foul. And it'll be first down and 10 from the Tiger 48. It's always the second guy gets caught, Jeff. That was a 14-yard gain from Bowers, and it was pretty much all eaten up by the 15-yard penalty. Well, I guess it was. So now it's back at the 48. Quarterback under center, Sauerwein. And he hands this one off to Fortney, and he is grabbed and brought down for a very short gain on the play. Yeah, they're running power to the left. We held the edge, the edge pretty well there. Canfield came off the backside to make that play. Logan Canfield, who was our player of the week last week. It's going to be second down and eight from midfield. 3.49 turning clock, second quarter. Polar Bears 14, Tigers nothing. Elkins has a wide out to the left side. Their quarterback in the shotgun, and there's the hand to Fortney. Oh. Uh oh he is hit and brought down. It is Logan Canfield again. He got him in the backfield and brought him down. Oh, see that open window? Yeah, he just read it. You know, linebackers are told, you see, you see an open window, you stick your face in it. So that's going to be a loss back to the 45-yard line. And it's going to bring up a third down and long. Third down and about 12 yards to go. A four-yard loss on that last play. Those defenders love those tackles for loss. Mm -hmm. That's a stat that's kept defensively. Third down and about 12 for the Tigers. Quarterback on oh. a throw for the first time. A wobbly pass that's incomplete at about midfield. It was intended at about the 48-yard line for Christian Lopez, but he couldn't get to it. And there's a flag on the play back in the Tigers' backfield. If Boda would have just turned his head, he'd have picked this off. Illegal shift by Elkins. Penalty will be declined by Fairmont Senior. So the penalty against the Tigers declined because it brings up a fourth down play on their very first pass of the night. Sauerwein not a real confident passer yet as a freshman. That was not a very well thrown ball and it was incomplete. And now fourth down, 12 for the Tigers. The line is scrimmage the 46 and Stanley to put it away. This one's angling to the far side. Michael picks it up on the run at the 10. He gets up to the 15. He's at the 20. The 25, the 30, the 35, the 40, and then is hit and knocked out of bounds over the 40-yard line at about the 43, and it'll be first and 10 for the Polar Bears from there. That's a nice return by the Polar Bears there, especially Gavin Michael up the right side. You know, Jeff, I was looking. Their punter, I mean, he's at, he's at you know, 11 yards. Um, by the time he kicks it, he's at eight, eight and a half. I mean, we, we got an opportunity to maybe block one of these punts. That's a 33-yard punt return for Gavin Michaels. So big help on that one as he picked it up as it was bouncing down at the 10. And now it's first down and 10 for the Polar Bears with 2.35 to go in the first half. Fairmont with a 14-0 lead. Whitehair back to pass. 
Sends a short pass over the middle, caught by Canfield, and he wow. runs towards the sidelines, but doesn't get out of bounds at the 50. Yeah, we got a late flag came in. It'll be a seven yard pass play, but a penalty pending and a holding yeah. penalty coming up against the Polar Bears, so you'll take that pass completion out of the book. Yeah, I guess that pocket was just too good. Repeat first down. So it'll be first down and 20. Third penalty of the night against Fairmont Senior. And it's first and 20, the ball back at the 33 in Fairmont territory, the clock at 228. Each team has all of its timeouts remaining. White here in the pistol formation. Two receivers right, two left, and there's a little screen pass near side caught by Michael at the 35. He gets up to the 40 and then surges forward to about the 41 yard line. It'll be a gain of eight yards on the play. Yeah, he tried to stiff arm past him. So it's second and 12. Don't have to get it all back at once. Eight yards on that pass play. And now with the ball at the 41. Polar Bears a little more manageable now in a second down and 12. And there is the handoff up the middle. No, a keeper by White mm -hmm. here. And White here will get to the 44 before he's tackled and brought down. Nice defensive play made by the Tigers. Aiden Lambert, a 6'5", 270-pound junior. Yeah, I don't know what was called there. We had a great push by our old line. Now the Polar Bears are going to use a timeout. 1.32 to go. Second quarter timeout with a score. Fairmont 14. Elkins nothing on fun. 93-1. National Bank, where you can... National Bank, where you can purchase or refinance your home with the No Down Payment Champion Mortgage. No down payment, no private mortgage insurance, no kidding. Visit your local branch to get started today. City National Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. To learn more, log on to mortgage.bankitcity.com. Sandwiches, better with Pepsi. Down and nine from their own 44-yard line. My guess in this situation is the Polar Bears are in four-down territory because I think if they didn't get the first down here, they would go for it with this much time left. Oh, yeah. I get the oh, yeah from the coach. That makes me feel better. 132, two timeouts left. The ball in Fairmont territory at the 44. Three receivers to the right side now. And Whitehair is back to pass. He's looking left. Now decides to run with it to the sidelines, and he tucks it, bounds. takes it inside the 50, runs out of bounds near the first down marker. Let's see how close he is. On the near side, the marker's on the far side, so yeah. it makes it a little hard to now tell. He's about a yard short. They'll mark him down at the 48. He needs the 47 for a first down. But, you know, the box was there. Just no one was open downfield, you know, and he, he, he finally had to take off with it. And, you know, did a nice job of getting out of bounds, didn't take a hit. Fourth down and a yard to go for the Polar Bears. At the Elkins 48. And there is Brody passing to the far side, and the pass is caught at the 50 by Jones. He has the first down as he takes it inside the 45 to about the 43-yard line. So Fairmont fourth and one didn't decide to run it for the yard. They threw it, and Jones catches it and takes it down to about the 43. It'll be a five-yard pass play. First down and 10, clock turning. Fairmont quickly to the line of scrimmage. White here back to pass. Sends it down the far side. Caught by Damani Johnson and out of bounds at about the 21-yard line. That was a great ball. Good pass protection. So that stops the clock. Chains are moved, and the Polar Bears will go first down and 10 from the Tiger 22-yard line. That puts Brody White here over 100 yards passing tonight. Fairmont leads 14-0. Clock shows 1.02 to go until halftime. Football marked at the 22. 
White here out of the pistol formation. He's back to pass, looks once, now runs to the right side of the field. Now decides to run with it inside the 20, inside the 15, and he's going to be brought down. Ooh. Running hard, takes it close to about the 12 yard Four line. Here, the ball carrier. Yeah. Tackled by number 11, Nick Bauer. And a timeout called. Timeout called by Fairmont Senior. Timeout, Polar Bears. 48 seconds to go in the second quarter. It's Fairmont 14, Elkins nothing on Fun 93-1. 1965, the team at City Construction has been an industry leader in all facets of construction, shaping the West Virginia landscape with some of the most recognizable commercial projects throughout the state. As one of the largest general contractors in North Central West Virginia, our outstanding record of quality workmanship and personal service is here for your next project. Call our team of experts today. Give us the opportunity to design build your next project. City Construction Company, West Virginia proud since 1965. Elkins trying to hold on in the final seconds of the first half and go into the locker room down by just two touchdowns. But the Polar Bears have just the opposite thing in mind. They would like to go into the locker room with a three touchdown lead. Yeah, we still got plenty of time, Jeff. 48 seconds of timeout. And you're close. And we are close. Ball is at the 12-yard line. Fairmont loves to throw it in these situations anyway. Look how open the middle of the field is. Pistol formation, white hair to pass. Looks to the right, now runs to the right. Now decides to take it down inside the 10. Tries to get past the defender at the 5. And he's along the sidelines, but not out of bounds. Yeah. Going to be brought down at about the five-yard line. You know, the middle of the field is wide open. I thought maybe he was going to hit uh, Michael on a slant. It's still there. See it? Second and three. Whitehair takes the snap. He's running with it to the far side, and he'll go towards the goal line into the end zone. It's a polar bear touchdown. Brody Whitehair, a five-yard TD run, and the polar bear score lead it 20 to nothing. The extra point yeah. Nice block by Dinger, stay engaged. Brody wants to be known as a running quarterback now. He scored two touchdowns, running the ball in himself. Peschel ready to attempt the extra point. Canfield holds, kick up, kick good. Timeout on the field, 20 seconds to go until halftime. It's Fairmont Senior 21, Elkins nothing on Fun 93-1. Hi, my name's Zach Frazier and I'm from Fairmont, West Virginia. And when I'm back at home in Fairmont, you'll find me at my local Parmar store. We had that Golden Boot pride at Parmar. There are literally hundreds of Parmar stores in West Virginia, Kentucky, Ohio, and Pennsylvania, and even more on the way. Download the Parmar app to save even more. And whether it's food, gas, groceries, or whatever, we have you covered at Parmar. West Virginia proud and ready to serve you. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. Polar Bears will kick off to Elkins, a team this season that has scored only five touchdowns, and this for the Tigers is game number eight. But you watch him tonight, and you yeah. think that's hard to understand because they look like a team that could run the ball pretty effectively. Yeah, they got us. You know, tonight they're showing a sound run game. Special ready to kick off. Lopez back deep, end over and kick short going to be taken on the run at the 20 yard line by Bowers. He'll take it out over the 30 and up to about the 31 yard line. Then hit and brought down there. Yeah, that was good coverage right there by our kickoff team. I didn't see any missed tackles there. Just 13 seconds on the clock here. Fairmont leading 21 to nothing. He was brought down by number 14, Gavin Michael. He's the Tristan Wilson. Elkins is set up first and 10 from the 29 yard line. Don't accept, expect anything fancy out of the Tigers here with 13 seconds to go. They have attempted one pass, yeah. and it was incomplete. It was, a, it was a duck, Jeff. Yeah, their quarterback is a freshman. He's not supposed to be their quarterback, but their regular quarterback suffered a broken foot. He should be ready to play in their next game. 
Quarterback comes up under center. First down, 10. And there's the handoff up the middle and uh, nothing but negative yardage. Ball was carried by Ryder and Ryder was hit by Arbogast and he'll lose yardage Number on the play. Ryder, the and that will be the final play of the first half. It is halftime. It is homecoming at East West Stadium in Fairmont. And the score at the half, the Fairmont Polar Bears 21, the Elkins Tigers nothing. The halftime report coming up next on Fun 93-1. An injury at any age can be a game changer. But with walk-in clinics Monday through Saturday, the Marshall Sports Medicine Institute is ready to get you off the bench and back in the game. Marshall Sports Medicine Institute takes care of the herd. Let us take care of you. Hi, my name is Zach Frazier, and I'm from Fairmont, West Virginia. And when I'm back at home in Fairmont, you'll find me at my local Parmar store. We had that gold and blue pride at Parmar. There are literally hundreds of Parmar stores in West Virginia, Kentucky, Ohio, and Pennsylvania, and even more on the way. Download the Parmar app to save even more. And whether it's food, gas, groceries, or whatever, we have you covered at Parmar. West Virginia proud and ready to serve you. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. Sandwiches, better with Pepsi. Hi, this is Meredith Mayer from Fairmont, West Virginia, and when I'm back home, you can find me at my local Parmar store. We have that thundering herd pride at your local Parmar stores. We are over 200 stores strong and growing. Download the Parmar app for even more savings and sign up for the Parmar rewards card. Whether it's food, gas, or groceries, we have you covered. We are Marshall and we are Parmar stores. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. Homecoming night and a quick start to the homecoming festivities down on the field. The Polar Bears with a 21 to nothing lead over the Elkins Tigers. JL, you're on the other side of homecoming now. You used to spend this time in the locker room. If you're the coach of a team that's playoff bound, having a good season like the Polar Bears are, you're up 21 nothing at halftime. What's your, what is your halftime strategy with the team? Well, you know, we just, you just got to tell them uh, you got to come out second half and, and put together two or three more good drives, you know, scoring drives. Um, you know, honestly, Jeff, we're not playing that bad. We're just, we just haven't been as explosive as we've been in the past or as we've been all season. You know, um, you know, we're not scoring every fourth play or every fifth play. You know, we, we're, we're putting putting drives together. And tonight Brody's showing that he's got, he's got wheels and an arm. Um, you know, and people show up. They 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 want to see the big air raid, which we're known for. But uh, you know, offensively, we're not playing a bad. We're up, we're up twenty-one nothing. Um, you know, defensively though, uh, Elkins is when they get in that two tight T with three back. You know, three in the backfield that, that balances us out. You know, we we can't declare strength. Um, and they're running. They're they're running the ball. I okay. mean, so now when you say we can't declare strength. Yeah. What are you saying, and what is that disadvantage well, for the defense? Well, usually uh, an offense will declare a strength. They'll be strong right, strong left. Defense will pick up their strength, and the defense will be set to, set to the strength. And they're coming out in two tights. They're balancing this out. We, we can't uh, look at the formation and call the strength. we got to go by the field. You know, if they're on the right hash, it's probably going to be strong right, left hash, strong left. And uh, you know they're do, they're doing a nice they're doing a nice job. You know this this is they're running the ball better than they have in the past. Um, you know they used to be a single we and we would just destroy them. It'd be forty to nothing 
at halftime. And they wouldn't even get past the 40 some nights. And uh, tonight, they, they, they're taking time off the clock is what they're doing. And, and back to when you were talking about strength, what you're saying, if I understand it correctly, is the defense can't predict where the ball is going to go because they're in yeah. like a neutral set. Yeah, when they're, in that, when, they're, when they're in that formation, and they've been predominantly in that formation, now they've shown us um, uh, uh, a red formation and a blue formation. And what I mean there, it's single back. You still have a tight end right or left with a wing, but you also have a wing on the weak side. Um, but therefore, you still have a strength set with the tight end. And uh, they're, they're running predominantly to where the strength is. Now they, they've, they're... Uh, toward the very end on their last possession they ran they did run the ball one time back to the weak side so I'm not sure I haven't been counting how many run plays that how many plays they've run tonight but they ran one back to the weak side and the other thing that Elkins did defensively they stopped the polar bears on a fourth down as Fairmont was trying to score yeah. and, and so when you take a look at the scoreboard now you see Fairmont up 21 to nothing well the polar bears came close to getting that fourth touchdown you're up 28 nothing. That seems maybe more like what people would have thought. But this game has been a little more competitive just in general, I yeah. think, in all aspects. I mean, the Elkins defense has done a pretty good job limiting the Polar Bears. Of course, when you listen to the stats, you're going to think that many yards is a good job. But I think from the standpoint of keeping them out of the end zone, only allowing yeah. three touchdowns is a pretty good first half for Elkins. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it, it, do I think Elkins could come back and score 21 points on us and tie us up and shut us out second half? No. But I think they're going to make the game uh, slow for us on offense. They're, 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 you know, I haven't really been paying attention to the play clock, but I guarantee you that they're not running the play. They're not setting the ball to us. The play clock's down, I'd say, seven or less. I mean, they're, they're, they're sucking time off the clock. And... Uh, I think maybe on, when we finally get the ball back, our, our guys are feeling a little bit, you know, a little bit of pressure because we, we do normally score every fourth or fifth play. And I, I, but, you know, 21 nothing, homecoming. Uh, we're happy. We're good. Homecoming going on down on the field. We are going to actually pick up the final stages of the homecoming celebration down on the field now as members of the court being escorted from the far side, the polar bear sidelines, to the near side. And now the first of our senior attendants is Myla Cocker, daughter of Mary Jo Gentero and David Cocker, one of the honorable community members of the National Honor Society. She, wrote, she serves as the co-editor of the High School Yearbook. Kate Musgrove is her escort this evening. He is the son of Stacy and Steve Ash and Jeff Musgrove. He's a four-year letterman for the Fairmont Senior Golf Team. Is also a four-year honor roll student. Our next senior attendant is Miss Emily Decker, the daughter of Chris and Stephanie Decker. She's a junior lineman and a trophy, once a state runner up for the female soccer team. When they're on stage, they're on senior for cross team, who's been a three-year lineman, a two-time all-state attack player, first team all-state attack player and was rated second in the state for goals and assists. She was selected as an automatic player by the U.S. Lacrosse Association and is committed to play the sport at Davis and Elkins College. Kylie Gilmore is escorting the step for this evening. Kylie is the son of Mark and Andrew Goldberg. He's a member of the Fairmont Senior Cheer Team. He's a member of the 2021 state championship football team. He's the co-host of the Carl Mar Tailgate Talk Show. Haley Hoskinson is the daughter of Sean and Melissa Hoskinson and is our third senior attendant. She's a four-year member and a three-year veteran of the Fairmont Senior Female Volleyball Team. She has been a student of Fifth Street Center for Dance for 15 years and is a student assistant for college. Haley is a member of the student council, a peer tutor, and an honorable student. 
Landon Barkley is her escort this season. Landon is the son of Jay Robin Barkley. He's a four-year runner of the four months the golf team and was named Big Ten Player of the Year. He's a four-year honor roll student and a three-year state champion in bowling. He's a volunteer at the Rich Suda Dinner and is a member of Math Honorary U Alpha Theta. Kenzie Kraft is our next senior attendant, and she is the daughter of Roy and William Kraft, a three-year member of the Fairmont Senior Female Swim Team, and a 13-year member of Movements and Dance Competitive Team. She is a member of the National Honor Society, Science Honorary, Interact Club, and Bible Club. Kenzie was nominated for and attended the National Youth Leadership Forum for Advanced Medicine and Healthcare at Johns Hopkins University. Aiden Jones is her escort this evening. Aiden is the son of David and Stephanie Jones. He's a member of the National Honor Society, Science Honorary, and Bible Club. He was named first team all conference and all state honorable mention for the Fairmont Senior Varsity Baseball Team. He was also a member of the 2022 Basketball State Championship Team. Our final senior attendant is Dakota Lieberdahl, the daughter of Jamie and Jamie Lieberdahl. She's a member of the female volleyball squad and a member of the National Honor Society. She also participates in Interact Club and Fairmont Senior High School's Student Council. This evening, Sammy Vianney is her escort. Sammy is the son of Michael Vianney. He's a member of the Fairmont Senior Baseball Team and is a two-time Ball State player. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Our maid of honor this year, Liz Angus, daughter of me and Jenny Angus. She's a player of the government and a trustee all regional recipient for the Fairmont Senior Female Soccer Team. For the lacrosse team, she is a three-year government, a three-time state champion, a two-time state all-star game participant, a first-team all-state defender, this year. She is the senior class treasurer, also a member of the National Honor Society, yearbook staff, and a member of the Magical Chamber Choir for three years. Caleb Young. It's halftime at East West Stadium in Fairmont, and we're almost at the end of the homecoming festivities down on the field. Polar Bear Band performing, and Maid of Honor, just being introduced to Ms. Amos. And the Queen will be introduced shortly. The Polar Bear is leading here at halftime by the score of 21 to nothing. First team all state, first team all region, first team all conference. He's also a member of the Fairmont Senior Golf Team, where he was named first team all conference. The 2023 Callaway Junior Tour West Virginia Player of the Year and placed fifth at the West Virginia Golf Tour. While we await the introduction of the now, homecoming queen tonight, and gentlemen, the queen we'll go down on the field and let you hear it. Homecoming 2023. Miss Abby Green. She's the daughter of Kevin and Molly Green. A four-year runner and a two-year captain of the Fairmont Senior Female Soccer Team. She serves as the secretary of the Bible Club and is a member of the National Honor Society and Science Honorary. Rob Destin is her escort for this evening. Robert is the son of Mary Destin and is a four-year veteran a captain and a 2020 state champion for the Fairmont Senior Varsity Male Soccer Team. He's also a member of the Bible Club.
Long Beach Flower Girl is Abby Joseph, daughter of Nancy and Alex Joseph. Her favorite activities include swimming, playing t-ball, and going to kindergarten. Abby's crown bearer is Cooper Kane, son of Dr. Rusty Kane and Katie Dock. His favorite activities include riding the dirt bike, wrestling, and jumping on the trampoline. And the Fairmont Senior Homecoming Queen and has been introduced time, now. She is Abby Green. James Green principal, Fairmont Senior and the maid of honor, Liz so Amos, introduced honor, tonight. Liz Liz Neil was Amos. last year's homecoming queen. She has come back to do the official crowning of the homecoming queen. And that is it from East West Stadium. We'll be back to check more and at halftime. The scores, Abby Fairmont Green. Senior 21. Elkins nothing on Fun 93 one our 2022 homecoming queen, Miss Peyton. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, your Fairmont Senior High School 2023 Queen of Homecoming, her maid of honor, and her court. At this time, if parents would like to take pictures, please go to the gate there approximately the 45 yard line. Please stay on the track and take your pictures. I'll be ready. Winner of the float competition this year, junior class, congratulations. <laughs> At this time, ladies and gentlemen, if you get out your red ticket for 50-50, Tonight's winner is going to take home 169 George Washingtons. Got it. For the equivalent thereof. Red ticket 74 84 7 7 8 74 84 7 7 8. From the Fairmont Senior Polar Bear Information page, we've just been informed that it was the... Halftime winding down at the stadium in Fairmont on homecoming night for Fairmont Senior. The Polar Bears leading Elkins 21 to nothing. Let's check the first half stats. Rushing yards, Fairmont Senior 171, Elkins 28. Through the air, the Polar Bears have completed 8 of 11 passes for 104 yards, one touchdown, one interception. Elkins 0 for 1 through the air. Total offense, Fairmont Senior 275, Elkins 28. Leading rusher for the Polar Bears, Dylan Auer 77 yards on six carries. Brody Whitehair, nine carries, 50 yards. And for the Tigers, it's Nick Bowers who's carried the ball 12 times for 55 yards. Touchdown scorers for the Polar Bears. Logan Canfield caught a 43-yard pass in the first quarter and ran it in, 4.30 to go. Polar Bears led 7-0 after Cam Peschel's extra point. That was the score at the end of one. Then in the second quarter, Whitehair scores from one yard out at the 6.28 mark. Peschel kicks it good again, and then with 20 seconds to go in the first half, Brody does it again, runs it in from five yards out. Peschel's extra point is good. The Polar Bears lead 21 to nothing. Fairmont with 12 first half first downs. Elkins with two. Penalty yardage, three flags against the Tigers, 34 yards. Three flags against the Polar Bears, 25 yards. No fumbles in the game. Just the one interception thrown by Brody Whitehair for the Polar Bears in the first quarter. Lots of games going on around West Virginia. We're going to check those scores and more 
As halftime continues from East West Stadium with the score, Fairmont Senior 21, Elkins nothing on Fun 93 1. Former Nation wishes Nick Janab a happy 23. In the Canadian Football League, British Columbia 17. Hamilton, uh, Games going on around West Virginia tonight. Let's start in Class AA. Wayne leading Chapmanville 12-0 at halftime. Independence on top of Mann. Mann is a single-A school, rated number two in single-A. Independence winning 31-0 at halftime. North Marion, no trouble with Lewis County tonight, leading 28-0 at the half. Winfield ranked Six in Class AA, 45 nothing lead over Sissonville at halftime. The Weir Red Riders at six and one in the top eight are playing Albert Gallatin of Pennsylvania. There's no score in that game first quarter. Philip Barber 35, RCB 13 at halftime. East Fairmont no trouble with Liberty tonight. It's 27-7 at the half. Allegheny, Maryland, the campers lead Kaiser 14-13 in the second quarter. Clay County and Grafton are scoreless first quarter. Bluefield leads Grayson County, Virginia 21-6 first quarter. The Beavers are 3-3 three three this season. Nitro 7, Logan nothing in the second quarter. And Point Pleasant leading Marietta, Ohio 14-7. In class AAA, we still have some friends there. Morgantown with a 14-6 lead over Parkersburg South at halftime. Fairmont Senior, actually, you take a look at these games in the old days. You look for the games won by defeated opponents. This year, you will even look for games won by teams that beat you. And Morgantown is one of those, so polar bear fans want the Mohegans to win. Huntington leads Parkersburg 14-0 in the second quarter. Princeton and Woodrow tied at 7. Bridgeport 32-0 over Preston at halftime. Spring Mills spoiling University's homecoming, leading the Hawks 21-7 second quarter. Oak Hill 13, Buchanan Upshur 7. That game is at halftime. And Wheeling Park and St. Clairsville scoreless in the second quarter. Brook leads John Marshall 28 to seven in the second quarter. And that takes care of the AAA scores. When we come back, it'll be time for the second half kickoff. The Polar Bears lead Elkins. It's 21 to nothing here on Fun 93-1. And at the half, Morgantown 14, Parkersburg South 6. Okay. Halftime has just about wound down here at East West Stadium. We've had homecoming. We've had our stats. We've looked at scores around the state. We've talked to the old coach. I guess maybe I shouldn't call you the old coach. Should I? Let's go with former coach. But I'll tell you what I like to think of when I think of you is that you're kind of the father of this polar bear success because it was your introduction to the head coaching position that brought about all of what we're seeing now. Uh, I, I, thank you, but you know. <laughs> and a lot of the athletes. remnants of what you yeah. did are still here. Yeah. So yeah, we've, 
we've, uh, we've been really graced at Fairmont Senior with some athletes over the last 17, 18 years. And now the Polar Bears are ready to kick off to start the second half. Peschel ready to kick off. Lopez back deep, and his kick is end over end, and Lopez takes it at the 15. Goes up the center of the field to the nice. 20, and then hit and brought down by Max Bracero at about the 26-yard line. You know, that's a great play, again, by our kickoff, uh, kickoff team. But, you know, that Ramirez, uh, I'd hate to turn him loose. Uh, he, he can... Uh, He's, he's got some wheels on him, Jeff. He's, he's quick. Well, the Tigers have it now first down and 10. The ball marked over the 25 at the 26-yard line. Polar Bears, front line. Bigelow, Arbogast, Bracero. Boda in at a linebacker spot for the Bears, along with Dakota Nisley, Logan Canfield, and Gavin Michael. First down play. And there's Bowers getting the ball, and he runs hard, takes it out over the 30 to about the 33, and there's a flag thrown on the play. 11 the ball carrier, flag on the play. That wasn't a flag that was just dropped. That one was tossed high into the air. Well, Elkin's got a good push there. But it looks as if they're going to get a penalty as the officials, the polar bear players started to edge closer to the officials and they backed them away. Long uh, conversation. Waiting for the official call. Here it is. Maybe. Dead ball, personal foul called against Elkins. Personal foul against Elkins. Is he first down? So that's a 15 yard penalty. Wonder what the conversation was about. Hard to understand. Sometimes I wonder what, what makes a conversation go that long when it's his, just a simple call. It's actually a 13-yard penalty because it's half the distance to the goal line, and now it's going to be first down and 23 yards to go for the Tigers. Ball back at their own 13, quarterback under center, and there's nothing, a big loss on the play as a deep handoff was buried by the Polar Bear defenders. Bowers got it, but he had no place to go. Yeah, that's just a red formation. Red meaning right, tight ends right, and each other. So, loss of three yards for Bowers on that play. And now it's going to be second down and 25. Another stoppage. The referee tonight is Francis Carpenter. We are not related. If we were, I'd have a little insight into why this is yeah. taking so long. I mean, so many different things. We have a uh, group conversation. Well, if you're related to him, put button into the Thanksgiving. I think one of the things that I thought they might have been talking about was they called it a dead ball foul. But the official then said, replay first down. And if it were a dead ball foul at the end of the play, it should have been second down. Well, the yard, the yard marker, the down marker on the far side says third. The scoreboard says second. This is just the same thing that we had last week against Morgantown. So it looks like now they've actually fixed it. It was the referee who said dead ball, but then he said first down afterwards. So now it's going to be third down and 25 for the Tigers. And there is the handoff off the left side, and the ball is carried out over the 25 up close to 34. 
26-yard line. Fortney carried it. And it's going to bring up a fourth down. Just ran jet sweep left to their strength. Got about 10 yards on the play. And it's going to bring up a third down, or fourth down rather, and 13. It's going to, running the scoreboard is going to take some kind of a college degree now, the way these games have gone the last couple of weeks, because it's, it's hard to keep up. Punting situation, I'm Stanley punting it away. On the run, Michael thought about it, now picks it up on the bounce at the 42. Comes this way, gets an opening, down the sidelines at the 50. He's down to the 45, the 40, the 35, the 30. No. Flags are thrown, and he takes it inside the 20 to about the 18-yard line. There are flags at both ends of the field. I got the impression you were not uh, pleased with the one flag that was thrown. No, I just, I just don't think that was a blindside block. It's a lot different when you're watching from up here, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. <laughs> you yes, see it things is. a whole lot better than but, down on the sidelines. But if you go back and look at the replay, Dinger almost blocked that. That's what I was saying in the first half. Their punter is sitting at 11 yards. And he, he's, so he takes one and a half, two steps. He's at eight. And Dinger, you know, Dinger being, what, five foot ten? Mm -hmm. If he'd have laid out, he'd have had it. Usually we like to go, I mean, max, even college is 15. High school... I always like to go 14, 13 and a half uh, with the depth of the punter. Personal foul, blind side blocking by Thermo Senior. Well, that was the blind side block that you you saw what they thought was a blind side block, and well, the I call mean, goes against the polar bears. So it takes the ball back to the 34 yard line. First and 10 from there. Actually, now they move it inside to the 32. So. It'll be first and 10 Polar Bears at the 32-yard line. Polar Bears lead 21-0. Elkins' first possession ends. And now we have a timeout called at the line of scrimmage. Timeout, 10.38 to go. Third quarter from Fairmont. It's the Polar Bears 21. Elkins nothing on fun, 93-1. Hi, my name's Zach Frazier, and I'm from Fairmont, West Virginia. And when I'm back at home in Fairmont, you'll find me at my local Parmar store. We had that Golden Boot pride at Parmar. There are literally hundreds of Parmar stores in West Virginia, Kentucky, Ohio, and Pennsylvania, and even more on the way. Download the Parmar app to save even more. And whether it's food, gas, groceries, or whatever, we have you covered at Parmar. West Virginia proud and ready to serve you. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. The Polar Bears have a 21 to nothing lead. We're early in the second half. Fairmont with its first possession of the second half and has the ball at its own 32-yard line, moving from right to left in the royal blue. Pants, jerseys, white helmets, white numbers, and Elkins home white. Their colors are black and orange. They have orange numbers and black helmets. Chris Wilson in the game at the running back spot for the Polar Bears. Gavin Michael in as... A blocking back now on this first down play. And there's the handoff to Wilson. Wilson off the right side. Takes it out over the 35 to about the 37-yard line. Nice gain on first down. He'll get about five yards. Stop made by Aiden Lambert. Yeah, nice blocking up front. You know, but I bet you Samson's looking over here, looking at these uh, uh, Elkins corners are playing 15 yards off the ball. And there's movement at the line of scrimmage, and the Tigers have jumped off sides. That will give the Polar Bears a first down. Offside, Elkin. Yeah, I, it's been a while since I've ever seen that, Jeff. I mean, these corners are playing off. 12. He's on the to be a first down for Fairmont Senior. So now it's first and 10, Polar Bears on the penalty. The ball comes up to the 42. White hair in the pistol formation, and he gives it to Wilson. Wilson mm. through a little hole and then is spun around at about the 45, a gain of three. Okay, you see the corners playing off. What do you do? Just throw it, throw it. Just uh, quick pass. Take advantage of the separation. Yeah. 
we did it a couple times in the first half. I mean, it's just like we're on a toss sweep. Second down and seven, the ball at the 45 in Fairmont territory. Gavin Michael wide to the near side, three receivers to the right. Jones, Canfield, and Dinger right side, Michael left side. Back to pass, White here. Moves out of the pocket, now runs upfield. He gets to the 50, now goes laterally towards the sidelines. He's down to the 45 and run out of bounds. It'll be a polar bear first down. They mark him out at the 42. It'll be a 13-yard gain for the polar bear junior quarterback. Yeah, protection's good. Brody just saw green grass. He's been doing more of that tonight. This is the, that's the 10th time he's run the ball tonight. And he's almost the Polar Bears leading rusher. First down, 10. Ball at the offense, 42. Now an empty backfield set for Whitehair. He's back to pass. Quick pass comes near side. Dinger catches it at the 45. He's down to the 40 yes. and still running. Comes to the near side at the 30. Down yeah. the sidelines at the 20. He's at the 15, the 10, the 5. Yeah. He's into the end zone. It's a Polar Bear touchdown. Cannon Dinger takes it in from 42 yards out, and the Polar Bears lead it 27 to nothing. You know, that was, that was a good job by our offensive line getting that the initial downfield block, but then when he broke it to the numbers, our wideouts got some great blocks downfield to set that up. Well, and that's pretty much what you were talking about, the short pass, and that's what they got to Dinger, and he made something out of it more than a short pass normally would. Here's Special's extra point from right to left. It is good, and there's time out on the field with nine minutes to go in the third quarter. The Polar Bears 28, the Elkins Tigers nothing on Fun 93-1. 1965, the team at City Construction has been an industry leader in all facets of construction, shaping the West Virginia landscape with some of the most recognizable commercial projects throughout the state. As one of the largest general contractors in North Central West Virginia, our outstanding record of quality workmanship and personal service is here for your next project. Call our team of experts today. Give us the opportunity to design build your next project. City Construction Company, West Virginia proud since 1965. Brody White here to Cannon Dinger. It's the second TD pass of the night. And the Polar Bears now have a 28 to nothing lead as Peschel gets set to kick off for the second time here in the second half. Bowers, Lopez, and Fortney back deep. Kick off, end over end, and caught on the run by Bowers, or by Fortney rather, and he takes it out over the 30 up to about the 31 yard line. And it'll be first and 10 Tigers from there. Tackle by number 14, Gavin Michael. First and 10 from the Elkins. Gavin's had all more tackles and kickoff. He's been busy. Rudy Carrillo in the secondary for the Polar Bears, along with Tavion Thornton, Damani Johnson. And there is the deep hand off to Bowers, and he breaks free. He gets out over the 35, the 40, the 45, the 50, and goes down inside the 45 at the 44-yard line. 25-yard run for Bowers. They got a good push, and we got missed tackles. I'm impressed with the speed of Elkins' backfield. There are a whole lot of teams could, that could use Nick Bowers in their backfield. I'd like to have him. He's had a really good night against the Polar Bears. First down 10, Elkins at the Fairmont 44. Quarterback up under center. This time it's Fortney off nice. the left side and Canfield. Nice tackle at about the 42 yard line. Maybe the 43, it'll be a gain of just two yards on the play, second and eight. Yeah, nice job by Canfield coming over the top. You take a look at Boom, the Elkins, the Elkins rushing attack. It's been 
Nick Bowers, and that's it. Nobody else has positive yardage. Jerry Richmond checks into the Fairmont defense now along the front line, along with Arbogast and Bigelow. Second down and eight for the Tigers. And there's a handoff off the left side, and the ball's taken inside the 40 to about the 38-yard line. I was watching Trevor Bigelow tackle the quarterback just after he handed the ball off. Yeah, he almost had them both at the same time. Yeah, that's just, <laughs> in the wing tee world, that's called belly. Um, it's just a dive to the left-hand side. They'll lead up the hole with the wing. Four-yard gain on that play. It's going to be third down and four for Elkins now at the Fairmont 38. The Polar Bears lead 28-0. Back to the T formation for Sauerwein. And now there's... A little swing pass to the near side, caught by Bowers at the 40. He's down to the 35, the 30, down to the sidelines. Tavion Thornton will bring him down at about the 19-yard line. Yeah, he's got some wheels on That was not a real comfortable First little pass. Down. No, it wasn't. It was just a little swing pass, but, you know, it was supposed to go to the right. He saw that it wasn't going to go, and he broke it back across the drain, across the field, and got some big yards, got first down out of And that's a 19-yard pass for Sauerwein to Bowers, and it's an Elkins first down, and it's first down and 10 from the Fairmont 19. 6.47 turning clock third quarter. The Polar Bears lead 28-0. The Tigers come out in the T formation now. And there is the handoff off the right side to Bauer to... Riley Ryder, and he takes it inside the 10, the 5, and is brought down at about the three-yard line. Ryder with a nice run. Good compliment to Nick Bowers. Runs hard, and it'll be first and goal from the three-yard line. First down, goal. First and goal, Elkins. Now, we would call that down. That was like 34 down. Same thing, but they run to the strong side. First down goal, three-yard line. Quarterback, Sauerwein, under center. Hands it off, and it is carried by Bowers down to about the three-yard line. I don't know if he gained anything on the play or not. Yeah, we had good penetration on that. Polar Bears have a player shaken up. And there's an official's time. Injury timeout with six minutes to go in the third quarter from Fairmont. It's the Polar Bears 28, Elkins nothing on Fun 93-1. Um, let's make it a 60. Fairmont's Max Bracero injured on the play, walks off to the sidelines on his own. It's going to be second down and goal from the three-yard line for the Tigers now. They have Bowers, Ryder, and Fortney, who are running backs behind their quarterback, Sauerwein. They have two tight ends, tight formation, and their running backs in the T formation behind the quarterback. Sauerwein gives it to Fortney off the left side. Gavin Michaels got him and throws him down at about the one-yard line. I was afraid he was going to pick him up and throw him into the end zone. Yeah. Yeah. 
So it'll be third down and goal now from the one. That's a good job by Gavin around the alley like that. Getting to him when he can, where he, where he did get to him. If he misses him, it's a touchdown. Tigers come to the line of scrimmage now. It is going to be third and goal from the one. Now they break out of that T formation, and the quarterback is back in the shotgun. And he hands it off. Bowers has it off the right side, goes in untouched into the end zone, and the Tigers have scored. It'll be a one-yard run for Nick Bowers, and it's 28 to 6. It's fitting. He's the one that got him down there. He has had a good night, over 80 rushing yards tonight for Elkins. Now a timeout at the line of scrimmage. They need a timeout to prepare for the extra point. Timeout Tigers, 5.02 to go third quarter. Polar Bears 28, Elkins 6 on Fun 93-1. Hi, my name is Zach Frazier and I'm from Fairmont, West Virginia. And when I'm back at home in Fairmont, you'll find me at my local Parmar store. We had that gold of boot pride at Parmar. There are literally hundreds of Parmar stores in West Virginia, Kentucky, Ohio, and Pennsylvania, and even more on the way. Download the Parmar app to save even more. And whether it's food, gas, groceries, or whatever, we have you covered at Parmar. West Virginia proud and ready to serve you. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. The Tigers call timeout. They are trailing 28 to six, and they're ready to attempt the extra point. And in this situation, you would think they'd be going for two, and they are as they break out of the huddle, quickly to the line of scrimmage. And this time it's a direct snap to Bowers off the right side, and Bowers gets it into the end zone for the two point conversion. So the Tigers score two, and with 5.02 left, in the third quarter, it's Fairmont Senior 28, Elkins 8 on Fun 93-1. Here at the Cracker Barrel, home-style food and great value go hand in hand with favorites like slow simmer chicken and dumplings starting at $7.99 or perfectly golden fluffy buttermilk pancakes with your own bottle of warm syrup. Come fill up on favorites without emptying your wallet. Cracker Barrel. Take care now. Elkins getting ready to kick off to Fairmont Senior after scoring its First touchdown of the night and its sixth touchdown of the season in its eighth game of the season. So this hasn't been uh, something the Tigers have done a lot of. I mean, kicking off. And Bowers, who led them down the field and also scored the extra point conversion, will be kicking off from left to right. Here is his kick. Little squib kick, and it is picked up at the 33-yard line, and it's taken out over the 40 and up to about the 42. And the Polar Bears will, that was Canfield who returned it and gets a nice return. The Bears have good field position at the 47-yard line. Yeah, he, he fielded it cleanly and just got what he could out of it. You know, starting at midfield, not too bad. At the 47-yard line, Polar Bears going first down and 10 from there. Dinger wide out to the near side, Canfield in the slot to the left. On the right side, it's Michael and Thornton as wide outs. That means there's one back, and it's Damani Johnson alongside Whitehair. And there's the shovel pass. It comes to Navon Jones this way. He gets to the 50. He's down to the 45. Down the sidelines at the 35. The 30 cuts inside at the 20, and he's going to be run down just short of the 20-yard line. Got a flag. And there's another flag on the play. Number 54, Aaron Sharp, number 77, Devin Fulber. 
flag thrown at the 39 yard line on the run. So the pass play is going to count. That's not a. Uh, Holding penalty called against the Polar Bears. Should be assessed from the 39, take it to the 49. Yeah. Be a 14 yard pass play. Penalty assessed on the run. Takes it back to the 49, and it's going to be first down again, but now it'll be first down and about eight yards to go for the Polar Bears. Now, make it six yards to go as they put it on the proper side of the 50. So the Polar Bears now, first down again, first down and about six at the Tiger 49-yard line. Canfield in the backfield as a blocker. Damani Johnson behind quarterback White here on this. First down play, Whitehair chased out of the pocket, runs to the far side of the field. Now he's going to take it to the sidelines and he'll just step out of bounds near the first down marker on the far side of the field at about the 43 yard line. I believe he got it. A lot of those close plays tonight on runs just like that along the sidelines, but it is a six yard gain for Whitehair and a first down. You know, a few weeks ago, Brody would have forced something down the field and you know, He's doing all right. That was, that was the right thing to do. You saw green grass, green green means go. He's carried 11 times tonight, and it's first and 10 Fairmont from the 43. Whitehair, screen pass, and it is caught by Johnson. He's grabbed by the jersey, and he's brought down for no gain on the play. Nice defensive play made by Aiden Lambert. He's made several of them for the Tigers tonight. No gain on the play. In fact, he'll lose a yard. It'll be second and 11. Yeah, I don't know if he read it or she just stayed engaged long enough to see it, but he made a nice play there. Second down and 11, and there's the shovel pass again to Navon Jones. He tries to cut it up field, and he goes down back at about the 44-yard line, so no gain on that pass play. Yeah, we gave him too much penetration, and it forced him to, forced him to stutter step, try to bring it up inside, and nothing was there. So third down and 11. The short passing attack for the Polar Bears. And now looking at a third down and 11 from the Tiger 44. Fairmont leads 28-8. 3-17 to go here in the third quarter. Three receivers to the right, one to the left. And Whitehair is back to pass. Sets up, fires it downfield, and the pass is ruled incomplete at the 35 intended for Navon Jones. Brody's been accurate tonight. He's completed 12 of 16, but they've been the shorter passes. 159 passing yards. Yeah, he, he, he didn't step into that one. Punting situation for Fairmont now. Gavin Michael will punt. Stands at his 40. I see where it we're at 15 yards. And he gets the punt away. This is a nice high punt that is going to hit and take a lateral roll now in Elkins' roll, and it's down to about the 20-yard line. So that'll be about a 36-yard punt, which is close to Gavin's average. And that'll be first and 10 for the Tigers at the 20 with 2.54 to go in the third quarter. Yeah, I think sometimes these, these young men forget that that ball's not round. You don't know which direction it's going to bounce. Get away from it. Papali in the polar bear lineup on the defensive side now. First down, Tigers. And the give comes to Bowers. Canfield wraps him up and brings him down after a gain of a couple up to about the 22-yard line. Number 11, the ball carrier for Elkins. It's been a long night for Nick Bowers. He's carried 18 times tonight. Yeah, they're just running power. <laughs> and he's done a nice job. It's second down and eight Tigers. Polar Bears on top 28-8. East Fairmont leading Liberty 34-7. Tigers come to the line in scrimmage now. Their quarterback is in the pistol formation. 
And now Riley Ryder drops down beside him, and Ryder gets the handoff wide to the left side. Dakota nicely gets him, and he brings him down at about the 27-yard line. It'll be a gain of about five and bring up third down and about three for the Tigers. Yeah, it's just one back power. Third down and short. I think we got some younger guys in there now. Some newer players in the lineup for the Polar Bears. Sprinkled in with some of the regulars. Third down and short. Third down and about three yards to go. Handoff nice. goes. A deep handoff to Fortney. And Canfield's got him for a loss on the play. And it'll bring up fourth down for the Tigers and a punting situation. Yeah, we get to see if Bardic blitzed him or he ran that Oh, uh, he just ran. He just ran an open window. He ran in that open window. I learned that terminology tonight. Stick your face in the open window. Four-yard loss on that play for Fortney, and a punting situation. Owen Stanley to punt. Michael to return. Punts it away short, and this one's going to hit near midfield and rolls towards the sidelines. And Michael can't get to it. It rolls out of bounds at the 44, and that's where Fairmont will get it. With 47 seconds to go in the third quarter, the Polar Bears leading 28 to eight on homecoming night here at East West Stadium. Hey, coming up on Tuesday night for the coaches show, it's going to be a little different. We're going to have the triple X mason jar hot wing contest. It's a hot wing eating contest. Eight coaches are going to participate. Eight Polar Bear coaches. That's Tuesday night, six o'clock. And there's going to be a, an award presented to the winner. And they're also going to uh, allow people to guess who might be the lucky winner with proceeds going to the Polar Bear Football Boosters. So that's Tuesday night. Hot wing eating contest involving Polar Bear coaches. My money's on Tyler Phillips. I've heard that before. First down and 10 for Fairmont at the 44. A little swing pass to Chris Wilson. He is hit and he's going down for a loss on the play of about two back at the 41-yard line. Yeah, we're throwing this to the short side of the field. And looks like we've missed a couple blocks. So it's now going to be second down and 13. The ball back at the 41. 20 seconds to go in the third quarter. Fairmont 28, Elkins 8. Whitehair has Wilson behind him. Takes the snap, and he's looking to pass. Looking near side. The pass is caught nicely by Canfield at the 45. He's at the 50. Down to the 45. Spins away. Down to the 35 and goes down at the 34-yard line. Pass to number two, Logan Canfield. by number 11, Bauer. Nice. Pass and catch and run. That was a good gain. 25-yard pass play, and that is the end of the third quarter. We play three from East West Stadium in Fairmont. It's the Polar Bears 28, the Elkins Tigers 8 on Fun 93-1. At the half, Memphis 14, Tulane 10. Fresno Stadium, Fairmont 28. Hi, my name is Zach Frazier, and I'm from Fairmont, West Virginia. And when I'm back at home in Fairmont, you'll find me at my local Parmar store. We had that gold and blue pride at Parmar. There are literally hundreds of Parmar stores in West Virginia, Kentucky, Ohio, and Pennsylvania, and even more on the way. Download the Parmar app to save even more. And whether it's food, gas, groceries, or whatever, we have you covered at Parmar. West Virginia proud and ready to serve you. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. Okay, thanks. Okay, same here. It's the fourth quarter here at East West Stadium. Polar Bears have the football first and 10 
in Elkins territory at the 34 yard line after that nice pass play from Whitehair to Canfield. Polar Bears front line, Bigelow at center. Richmond at one of the guard spots. And Whitehair is back to pass, getting pressure. Unleashes it downfield for Michael, thrown behind him and out of bounds. Incomplete. It'll bring up a second and ten. Yeah, that's something Elkins hasn't shown on, you know, until now. They, they blitzed the uh, outside linebacker to Brody's right side. Lots of pressure fast. Yeah. The guards are Richmond and Angeline. The tackles are Arbogast and Bigelow. I'm sorry, are Dawson and Bigelow. The center is Arbogast. Second down and 10 for the Polar Bears. Handoff goes to Wilson. Wilson is hit and stopped in his tracks from behind. Nice defensive play made by the Tigers, Aaron Sharp. Yeah, we had a nice push up the middle. We didn't really control the backside end, and he just slid down the line and made the play. Two-yard gain for Wilson. Third down and eight for the Polar Bears, leading 28-8. The ball now at the Elkins 32. Good push. White here on a keeper off the left side, down to the 30, the 25, down the sidelines at the 20, the 15, the 10, the 5, yeah. and he's marked out of bounds. Marked him out inside the 20 yeah. on the far side, but he's going to get enough for a Fairmont first down. Mark him at the 19-yard line. And a 13-yard game. But you still sound real good. I get to practice that every now and then. Uh, I like how you, I mean, you, you go, you talk about as fast as they're running. <laughs> Some of them are a little easier than others. <laughs> First and 10 at the 19 now. White hair out of the pistol. He's back to pass. He has time. Downfield. The pass is incomplete. Oh. Intended for Gavin Michael. And broken up. Yeah, they'll both wish they had that one back. Michael was open, just couldn't hang on to it. Second down and 10 for the Polar Bears at the 19. You don't see Gavin drop no, too don't. many passes. In fact, I thought when he didn't catch it that they got a hand on it, but I don't think they did. Second down and 10. White here, back to pass again. Now sends it downfield into the end zone. It is caught by Dinger. It's a polar bear touchdown. 19 yard TD pass. White here to Dinger. The polar bears score again and lead it 34 to 8. Believe it or not, it was the same play. They switched uh, Dinger and Michael. So Dinger gets his second TD catch of the night, and Whitehair has thrown his third TD pass. And the Polar Bears, Cam Peschel comes in to attempt the extra point. Bigelow snaps, Canfield holds, Peschel kicks, the kick is up and it is good. Timeout on the field, 10.59 to go, fourth quarter. Polar Bears 35, Elkins 8 on fun, 93-1. National Bank, where you can purchase or refinance your home with the No Down Payment Champion Mortgage. No down payment, no private mortgage insurance, no kidding. Visit your local branch to get started today. City National Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. To learn more, log on to mortgage.bankitcity.com. Sandwiches, better with Pepsi. Polar Bears now lead 35 to 8. Scores around the state tonight. A team to watch out for, kind of a sneaky team in AA. Not sneaky from where they're rated because it's Roan County. But they're undefeated. They're leading Braxton, of course. That doesn't really mean very much. But Roan has a 48 to nothing lead at the half. And North Marion is going to be playing Roan before the season ends. That should be an interesting matchup. 
Polar Bears Campeche kicking off from left to right. Soccer style kick downfield, end over end, and taken and dropped at the 15 yard line. The ball is loose, but the Tigers recover at the 24. That was Fortney. That was close, Jeff. We almost had her. Because it, it hit Fortney and then it bounced about five or six yards back the other way into the direction of the charging blue jersey polar bears, but he couldn't come up with the, the polar bears couldn't come up with the ball. And Fortney, I uh, believe, is a little shaken up on the play as he's down, and we have an injury timeout. 10.52 to go in the fourth quarter from East West Stadium. Fairmont Senior 35, Elkins 8 on Fun 93-1. Hi, my name is Zach Frazier and I'm from Fairmont, West Virginia. And when I'm back at home in Fairmont, you'll find me at my local Parmar store. We had that gold of pride at Parmar. There are literally hundreds of Parmar stores in West Virginia, Kentucky, Ohio, and Pennsylvania, and even more on the way. Download the Parmar app to save even more. And whether it's food, gas, groceries, or whatever, we have you covered at Parmar. West Virginia proud and ready to serve you. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. In the third quarter, it was thrown in 28 by side 7. In the third, one down 28, Parker herself, 24. In the fourth, Bridgeport is tested. Elkins has it at its 24 yard line, first and 10. Dylan Fortney was the injured player, but he's up and he jogged off the field. He's okay. East Fairmont leading Liberty now 41 21 with about four minutes to go in that game. So the Bees will win another one. Yes. We get set for that big east-west matchup in just a few weeks. First and ten, Tigers. And there is Bowers getting the handoff, and he's grabbed from behind, and he's brought down for a loss on the play. He had some good penetration off that left side. Bigelow, Papali. Whoa. In on the stop. They missed a chop block here. Jay Papali, 6'4", 199-pound sophomore. Second down and 13, the ball back at the 21-yard line after that three-yard loss for Bowers. Elkins trailing 35-8, nearing the 10-minute mark of the final quarter. Riley Ryder alongside the quarterback gets the handoff. The hand takes it up the middle, and he takes it up close to the 30-yard oh, wow. line. The ball pops loose, and the Tigers pick it up, and it's picked up at the 40 and taken to the 45-yard line by Caden Ramirez. Little relay there. The ball fumbled, picked up, and carried upfield to about the 45. Yeah, this ball, this ball was originally supposed to go to the right. He, he broke it back. So the ball's at the 45-yard line now. And the Tiger first down. It's their fifth of the game. They trail 35-8 to eight at their own 45. Quarterback, Sauerwein, under center, handoff to Ryder, and Ryder is hit, and there are several blue jerseys there, and he's dropped for no gain, but he surged after the whistle had blown, and he was finally broke free and surged to try to get a yard, but they're going to set him down at the line of scrimmage. Number 30, second and 10. I'll tell you, one of the things I like this year is the strength of schedule rating system because you're rewarded for playing teams that are good, and you can't, playing a weak schedule can come back to haunt you. When you play a strong schedule, you'll still get points if you're beaten by stronger teams. If the Polar, if we didn't have strength of schedule now, Fairmont would be seventh instead of fourth in the latest ratings. Second down play, handoff goes to Bowers off the right side. And Bowers takes it up to the 50 and then down to the 49 and then a late flag thrown. Bigelow in on the tackle for the Polar Bears. Canfield come flying in through there. He, he missed him in the backfield, which surprises me because he's made some plays for us tonight. Yeah, see. Oh, they might have got, they might have got us for piling on. The referee having a conversation now. 
Smoke Conaway is one of the officials tonight. Smoke's dad was one of the original coaches on the North Marion coaching staff. And also, Smoke coached on the Polar Bear coaching staff. Yeah, back when we started in 05. And Jeff Thompson, one of the officials tonight, played on North Marion state championship teams back in the 80s, early 80s. Broadcast his games. So it's an illegal block called against the Tigers. Block in the back and open. And it's going to take the ball back to the 40. So they get a gain up to the 50-yard line and then a 10-yard penalty after that. So it's going to be second down and 15 for Elkins now. Three receivers to the left side, but they've only thrown two passes tonight. Quarterback Sauerwein will hand it off to Ryder. Ryder trying to get outside, but Michael's got him. <laughs> he brings him down. You don't see anybody run through Michael very often. No. If he can get his hands on you, you're, you're going to go down. It's a two-yard loss, so a tackle for loss for Gavin Michael, and it's back at the 38-yard line. And it's going to be third down and about 17 to go now. Fairmont leads 35-8, eight minutes to go in this game. I think Elkins is going to be glad it decided to play this game tonight because yeah. it's been a competitive game for them, even though they trail 35-8. Rolling to the right is the quarterback, Sauerwein. And now he's in trouble along the sidelines, and he goes down at the 40. Lashley gain a couple of yards, but he goes down, tackled there by Canfield and Boda. And it's going to be fourth down and 15. I think that was a, I think that was a run all the way. The way, the, way uh, the backfield was blocking. I wonder how many tackles Canfield has. We do not have that stat. And here is Stanley, hunting it away. Short angles to the sidelines and then rolls out of bounds at about the 30. So that would make it a 30 yard punt and Fairmont's ball with 7.03 to go in the fourth quarter. The Polar Bears lead 35 to eight. Coming into this game, As far as the record goes, Brody White here, well, he's moved into the top 10 in pretty much all career passing records. He needs 405 yards coming into this game to uh, move ahead of Jared Ferguson. Obviously not going to do that tonight, but he's going to about be about 200 yards short after tonight because he has thrown for 200 yards tonight. So where would that put him after he passes Ferg? You mean in... It'll move him into fifth place. Fifth place? Yes. He needs 14, well, now 11 touchdown passes to move ahead of Dominic Smith into fourth place all time. And he needs now 16 completions to move ahead of Trevor Malnick into sixth place all time in that category. Here is White here, handing it off up the middle, and the ball's carried nicely out over the 30 to about the 35-yard line by Damani Johnson. You know, if you've heard... I've heard Ray talk about this in earlier games. You know, that, that run right there is more or less like a split flow. Um, you know, we're, we're hitting one direction and we're running back the other way. And again, six. So now it's second and four from the Fairmont 36. White here, pistol formation. Hands it off. No, he keeps it, and he's running to the left side. He gets back to the 35. He's up to the 40, the 45, the 50, and then is run out of bounds on the far side of the field. Got a flag. And another flag thrown downfield. I think that was thrown by Smoke. Conway. So, let's see what they're going to call here because they're going back to the line of scrimmage in most cases that means you're going to see a holding penalty now they're moving the ball from the line of scrimmage so it's going to be assessed from the spot of the foul
smoke looking for his flag. That's where the penalty yardage will be assessed from. And that's at about the 47 yard line. See, see, I have a problem with this, okay? Because that hold that they called had nothing to do with the play. If it was a hold. So Brody Weider gets 11 yards on the run. And then the Polar Bears hit with a 10 yard penalty for holding. The ball comes back to the 37 yard line where it's going to be second down and three. 6-14, clock turning, fourth quarter, Fairmont 35, Elkins 8. Whitehair gives it to Wilson off the left side. Wilson gets out over the 40, the 45, the 50, and into Tiger territory at the 48-yard line. Nice run by Wilson, stop made by Nick Bonner of the Tigers. Very nice run. Fifteen yards for Wilson on that carry. Yeah, we, we got the edge on that. Chris Wilson, a basketball player playing football for the first time, and he's had a good season for the Polar Bears. Seen a good bit of playing time. He's a junior. He's got another year to go. First and 10, the ball at the Tiger, 48. High snap, and Whitehair on the option. Now pitches it late, not a good pitch. Canfield picks it up, and he's going to be dropped at the 48-yard line. Yeah, the, the pitch relationship was not the greatest there. That is a play. The Polar Bears, I don't know that I've seen them run it well this season. It's about the only thing offensively that it seems the Polar Bears struggle with is the option play. I can't remember a time that they've pitched it and actually gained yardage on it. It'll be second down and 10. Yeah, you got to have good pitch relationship when you're on the option. Meaning you want them to be even. In that instance, Canfield was a step or two behind. Second down and 10, White here back to pass. Has time, now comes to the sidelines. He's running again, and he runs out of bounds inside the 45-yard oh. line. And one of the Tiger players oh, hit the oh, turf yeah. hard. Yeah. White here is going to get about five yards on the play. He's almost at 100 tonight. Ball set down at the 43. Five yard gain. Whitehair's run for 98 yards tonight on 15 carries. I'll have to check back in his records to see if that's a career high for him running the ball. Third down, five for the Polar Bears. From the Tiger 43, clock stopped, 446 on the out of bounds play. Michael White out to the near side. Two receivers, wide left. Handoff goes to Wilson off the left side. Nice. Chris inside the 40, the 35, to the sidelines at the 30, the 20, the 15, the 10, the 5. He's into the end zone. It's a Polar Bear touchdown. Great run. Chris Wilson, a 43-yard TD run, and he scores his first touch, his second touchdown of the season, and the Polar Bears now go on top 41-8. You're going to see off to our left side, got a great push. Number 16, 61, got a great push. Canfield had a nice chip block. Joey uh, Richmond has been playing really well for the Polar Bears on that offensive line and noticed it last week against Morgantown. Here's the extra point by Peschel, and it is good. Yeah. Timeout on the field, 4.24 to go, fourth quarter. Fairmont Senior 42, Elkins 8 on Fun 93-1. Hi, my name is Zach Frazier and I'm from Fairmont, West Virginia. And when I'm back at home in Fairmont, you'll find me at my local Parmar store. We had that gold of pride at Parmar. There are literally hundreds of Parmar stores in West Virginia, Kentucky, Ohio, and Pennsylvania, and even more on the way. Download the Parmar app to save even more. And whether it's food, gas, groceries, or whatever, we have you covered at Parmar. West Virginia proud and ready to serve you. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon.
Good night for Marion County High School football teams. East Fairmont leading Liberty now 48 to 21. North Marion defeated Lewis County tonight 35 to 7. I thought that been, I thought that would have been a more competitive game. I thought so too. Now it'll be Peschel kicking off from the 40 yard line. End over end, short, and Fortney gets it at the 25 yard line, and it's taken up to about the 30, and it'll be first down and 10 for the Tigers. That was Number 10. Tanner Wooden. Tanner Wooden, I think. Caden Ramirez returning, and Tanner Woodman did make the tackle on the kickoff return. Freshman quarterback. Came down the field. Nice. You like to see that out freshman, Jeff. Yes, you do. In the old days, you had freshman teams. Yeah, yes, I did. Those days uh, pretty much gone by the wayside for the AA schools. AAA still has some freshman football games, but... I was, I was worried when it first happened, worried that it might discourage some freshmen who had to practice with varsity players and get knocked around and beaten up, but it seems to be working out for now. Because it, it, hit, it hit when I was, became head coach. I yeah. remember that. Yep. And it was... Uh... First down and 10, hand off to Bowers. Bowers off the right side, and he'll get maybe a yard. Papali was the... Yeah. Also in there for the Polar Bears. He's, uh, he's got the frame to really be a quality player for the Polar Bears because when you take a look at him, he's 6'4", 199, but he's a sophomore. He's a sophomore. He's got, he's got room to put some weight on. I remember, he did a nice job there. Remember Eric Smith because he was a freshman. He was just a tall, skinny kid. Yeah. <laughs> now he's playing Division One football. And doing a good job. Yeah, at doing Miami. Doing a real good job. Not to mention Dante Stills getting that big quarterback sack against Joe Burrows last weekend. Yep. That yeah. was exciting. Oh, I came out of my chair at the house. That's saying something. <laughs> Get you out of that chair. Second down and nine for the Tigers now. And then the hand, their handoff goes off the left side, and it's carried up over the 35-yard oh. line. Chris Wilson making his presence known on defense, too. So Wilson in on the play for the Polar Bears. It's going to bring up a third down and about four. They had Aaron Sharp carrying the ball, and he doesn't have a running back number at 54. Third down, four yards to go for Elkins. The ball at the 36, just 2.44 turning clock. Polar Bears lead 42-8. to eight. Sauerwein comes up under center, and there is the handoff off the left side, and it's taken up to about the 38-yard line. That'll be all. Stop on the play made by Wilson again. He did a good job stopping him in his tracks. It's going to bring up a fourth down and one. Riley Green in the game for the Polar Bears along the front line as well. Jackson Lowther in the 32, another freshman. Also Dylan Apanowitz. He's a freshman in the game for Fairmont. Justice Smith in the game. We already mentioned Tanner Woodman. Fourth down and one for the Tigers. Sauerwein Ooh. gives it off in the backfield, and they're going to stop him for a loss, and the Polar Bears will take over on downs. Jordan Wagner. Oh, my. <laughs> they move the ball up to the 40. And this is for first. They call it a first down. So... Yeah. I think I, there's little generosity there, but yeah. it's first and 10 Tigers, a minute 49 to go. And coming up under center is the quarterback, Sauerwein, with three running backs behind him. And he hands this one off to Fortney, and Wilson's got him and brings him down at about the 41-yard line. Nice play. Both sides of the ball having a good game. Remember, Elkins has its... First unit in there, the Polar Bears playing all of their reserves right now. Front line with Green, Apanowitz, and Wu McDowell. Also in there for the Polar Bears is Jordan Wagner, Jason Walker, Rudy Carrillo, Tanner Woodman. Second down and nine, inside one minute to go. Handoff goes to 
Sharp again, and he'll take it up close to the 45-yard line. Gang tackled there. And we'll have just one more play, most likely. So third down, five yards to go. Tigers have to run one more play. The Polar Bears with a big lead. Getting ready for perhaps a couple of weeks off with an open weekend. The game against Carrick called off. Fairmont will most likely have just a nine-game regular season schedule. Shotgun formation. Quarterback has nobody to hand it to. Now he's running to the right side. He's just going to run out of bounds and then just throw it into the Polar Bear sideline with three seconds to go. So, incomplete pass. He's one for three passing tonight. And it brings up a fourth down and five with 3.8 seconds to go. So we'll not be on the air next Friday and most likely not the Friday after that, but the East-West game will be the Polar Bears' next game unless a scheduling change is made early this week. Fourth down, five to go. Last play of the game. Sarawine under center, hands it off, taken up the middle, up to the 49-yard line in Polar Bear territory. Right. Sharp again, and the ball game is over. Justice. And the Fairmont Senior Polar Bears have done it. Winning tonight, homecoming against the Elkins Tigers. The final score, Fairmont 42, Elkins 8 on Fun 93-1.